Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. Today is Wednesday and I do my Q&As on Wednesdays where you basically get to ask me whatever questions you want. <laughs> and I do my best to try to answer those questions. So um, this week, uh, there's some really great questions that have been asked. And I think I kind of went a little bit overboard on one of those questions. <laughs> I have something prepared that's going to be really awesome. I hope that people enjoy it as much as I do, because I, I really put a lot of effort into this <laughs> one part. And it's kind of funny. Oh, well, we'll see. You'll see when I get there. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping, um, where last week, uh, one of the questions that was asked was about my top 10 challenge videos that I do. So every week I do on Fridays, I do a challenge video and I basically encourage people to, you know, whenever they can to do a top 10 response where they basically can show comics in their collection and, um, you know, on a basic theme, like, and, you know, it can be like last, last week it was motorcycles. It can, this week it's going to be a surprise. Uh, <laughs> and, each time I do a different theme and then you try to find the best comics in your collection that kind of meet that theme. And I was basically asking, um, you know, my viewers, you guys uh, watching, what comics, uh, you know, what themes that they would want to see. And that was based on a question that was asked. So there's a couple kind of responses in here I'm going to read that relate to that. So Zach, uh, no, sorry, uh, Michael L wrote, how about double covers, uh, first and second appearance of a villain covers? You know, and those are some examples. Juggernaut on X Men, um, and uh, Robert uh, uh, Richard. I mean, Richard Lashira wrote. Uh, Thanks for bringing up my suggestion. He was the one that asked the question last week. Uh, good idea. Uh, one good idea might be to do a video preview for all the cover appearance of a specific villain. Would be nice to see covers from the first Green Goblin appearance at, to the most recent, summarizing what went on in on in each issue would be great as well if time permits. Most of us haven't had the pleasure of seeing these gems. Okay, so these are some of the ideas for future cover challenges. I actually am going to take the advice of people that made suggestions. Um, I plan to do like best Green Goblin covers or best uh, Galactus covers or best Spider-Man covers. So I'll be doing like themes related to specific characters, villains and heroes, and maybe even team ups. Uh, you know, I'll try to make it fun. I want to make it so that people can pull out books from their collections that maybe no one's seen before. Uh, so I'll try to make it fun. But uh, <laughs> this week, <laughs> It's, it's going to be very similar to last week in terms of themes, but you'll see when I get there this week. But uh, expect in future videos to see, you know, more uh, variety in terms of uh, the top 10, uh, you know, challenge videos that I do. Okay, now into this week's questions, some new stuff. Um, and this is the one that I kind of prepared a lot for, and I hope you enjoy. Um, this one is from uh, Zach Maxwell. Which Golden Age artists would you place on Mount Rushmore? Artists exclusively, not character creators like Bob Crane, uh, Kane, unless you believe his artwork is worthy. Would you please show an example of each nominee if you have one? Okay, so what happened was... <laughs> what happened is... Okay. I thought, okay, four, there's four heads on Mount Rushmore. So I was thinking, what would be the four kind of great masters of the Golden Age? And I do have those picked. I actually picked those artists. But then I was like, oh, but people probably like to know about these other artists that are also considered great artists from the Golden Age. So I kind of wanted to do a video where I give my top 20 artists that you should know <laughs> from the golden age but also mention a few others that i'm not going to show their books and also i will show to the answer to the question four artists that i think should be on that mountain <laughs> okay so a little bit you know i want to give you a taste of the golden age in terms of the artists and maybe that's really what i'm trying to do here so 20 artists 
These are all great books. You'll love it, I hope. <laughs> Just watch. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to start out with a female artist. Women can go first. Uh, ladies before gentlemen. Um, this is an artist I really, really love. Um, I'm going to just show one example from each artist. Uh, this is Lily Renee. She's still living, actually. She's one of the few living Golden Age artists. And this is one of her, I think, one of her masterpieces. This is Planet Comics number 39. And it's just, you know, she does... I like good girl art, so of course I'm going to pick a good girl art artist. And she's just a great artist. Um, and she did a lot of Planet Comics. Um, she also did um, like some fight comics as well. And she did a bunch of different uh, publications uh, from Fiction House. So Lily Renee, great, great artist. Okay, so that's the first one. Now the second one is another artist um, that maybe this one maybe could have belonged on Mount Rushmore because this is a, a major artist. Um, but it's one that, you know, there's real collectors for this artist, uh, but it's one that, like, people that collect superheroes and horror might not think about this artist, but this one is a major artist. Um, this is Carl Burks. Uh, Carl Burks is most well known for his, uh, artwork for Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge. He was the one that actually was the one that helped create <laughs> Uncle Scrooge. So um, just a phenomenal artist. Like he has some amazing covers. Um, and he, he his original artwork uh, for um, Disney was mostly interiors, but then he later got cover artwork and he did a lot of covers that were really amazing. So Carl Barks to me is, a, is kind of a major artist from the golden age, one that should be remembered. So that's my second one. <laughs> um, now we're going to get into some some more fiction house artists. Uh, this is one that I think he's semi well known. Like you know, it's one that does have collectors. Again, another Planet Comics cover. Uh, this is a Joe Doolin. Uh, just a really uh, really great artist. Uh, he would do these really kind of good girl art covers, just really great uh, science fiction art, I guess. Um, but he also did stuff for um, like uh, Wings and a whole bunch of other titles for Fiction House. And just a really great artist um, that people should know. <laughs> he does amazing art. People should know who he is. So uh, that's Joe Doolin. Next one is one that I really love, one of my favorite artists. Um, Another one that I believe people should know. And he's also known for good girl art. So you're going to see a bit of a theme, good girl art. Most of my collection feels like <laughs> good girl art. But uh, this is Al Felstein. And uh, Al Felstein, he, he actually did everything on this book. He did the, uh, the cover, the interior art, and even wrote the story. Um, and he went on to um, do some pretty major things. Uh, you know, he he was uh, involved with EC Comics. I think he was their editor at one point. Um, just a major comic artist. Um, so uh, his early stuff from the late 40s uh, was really this good girl art stuff. And it was just, he was sort of known for headlight covers. So this is an example of that. Um, and just, um, his books were even mentioned in The Seduction of the Innocent because they were a little bit headlighty, <laughs> if that's a word. Um, so yeah, Al Felstein, great artist. Next one is an uh, interesting artist, um, one that uh, some people might know. Um, this is Al Cap. And um, he is not necessarily like known for being the best artist or anything, but he is known for his certain style. Um, and he, one of his creations was uh, Shamu. This is an uh, example of that. Shamu number one, first appearance of the Shamu. <laughs> Shamu. Um, and just he's considered one of the greats from the Golden Age. So, so that's the next one on my list. Um, Another really great artist, another Fiction House one, <laughs> um, is um, 
Rob, uh, uh, Bob Lubbers. And he, again, he's known for a lot of these kind of leggy, <laughs> very leggy uh, covers and women in bondage covers and just really great artwork. Um, you know, sort of sexy women in peril kind of covers. Uh, he did a lot of covers for Fiction House and, um, and he would also do interior art, um, I believe. Um, so yeah, just another great artist, Joe Doolin. Okay. Uh, an artist that um, actually I, I enjoy a lot um, is Ken Ball. Bald, Ken, Ken, wait, not Bald, Bald, <laughs> Ken Bald. Um, I can never pronounce his name properly. Bald. Um, so he was known for Sun Girl, but he also did um, other things for Marvel. Uh, so just a just a really great uh, artist. He has a certain style. I'm not sure, you know. Uh, just seeing one comic, you can't really notice his style, but he did a lot of uh, good girl art comics. He did a lot of these romance comics for uh, Marvel. Uh, well, at the time, it wasn't called Marvel. It was called, um, oh, actually, it was known as Marvel, <laughs> but I think it was Timely. Uh, I want to say Timely, but but maybe, or Atlas. Uh, so yeah, so just he was just another great Golden Age artist, Ken Ball. So, and... Now we're getting into ones that people might know because these ones kind of spanned beyond the Golden Age. And the one I'm thinking is uh, Steve Ditko. So this is a, just a really, one of the more like uh, infamous Steve Ditko covers. This is like kind of one of those electric, electrocution kind of covers. But it just shows the skill level of Steve Ditko. He, was, he would draw like all the sinews in the arm and just just really, really detailed uh, anatomy, I guess, would be the way to say it. Um, but yeah, this is a good example of Steve Ditko and one of his classic uh, covers. Um, and Steve Ditko, uh, you know, he's, this is from uh, Charlton, but he also got involved with Marvel. And, you know, he's well known into the more modern age. Or I should say silver, silver age. Another artist that I really love, <laughs> and this is Maurice Whitman. And he would do a bunch of covers. He would do a lot of the Jungle Girl covers and stuff like that. But he also did uh, a series of uh, Good Girl art covers for Ghost Comics, which is a pre-code horror series. And he just, I, he, his style is very, very um, unique as well. You know, it's something that you can recognize once you see it. Uh, especially, I always always mention his faces. The women always have that kind of look to the, their face. I don't know. Uh, but his, his artwork is just stunning. Um, and this series, because it, all, it features all of his covers, is a very popular amongst the Golden Age uh, pre-code horror collectors. So that is Maurice Whitman. Next one. Uh, another great artist, and I recently showed this one in uh, one of my challenge videos, is um, Charles Biro. And Charles Biro was kind of known for the style of art where it's, uh, well, th like this style, but, but also what he would do is he would uh, really make almost a story being told, very detailed artwork. Almost like you would see like as a um, like a architectural renderer or somebody who really like makes all the details and shows all the little pieces of, of a scene. Um, if you look like there's even like <laughs> like little house and everything and like little sign and all the little details of it. Uh, he would try to like incorporate his name like his signature into the artwork as well. Um, but just very detailed style of artwork. And so Charles Biro, oh, it's funny, I think there was like nine books <laughs> of his that were featured in The Seduction Innocent because he would have very, uh, sometimes very uh, graphic uh, uh, covers that would get, get, the, <laughs> get into trouble, um, you know, showing scenes of murder or whatever. Um, 
So a really great artist, Charles B. Rowe. Another great um, pre-code horror artist, also mentioned in Seduction and Innocent, is uh, Bernard Bailey. And he has his own style as well. So these, the reason I'm showing a lot of the all these different artists is because they all have their own unique style, which for the golden age is kind of a big deal because um, at the time in the golden age, it wasn't like nowadays. <laughs> nowadays, every artist has to try to have their own unique style and really stand out to, you know, to distinguish themselves. Well, back in the golden age, it was more about production art. And, you know, you you do the artwork a certain way and that would be it. But these artists were standouts at that time. So uh, this is Bernard Bailey, uh, just a really great artist. And his covers are considered some of the premier uh, pre-code horror covers of the time. So just this is Weird Mysteries, a really great one. Also mentioned in this one was mentioned in Seduction Innocent. Great skull cover. Now I'd feel really uh, <laughs> if I didn't mention this artist, I know there would be a lot of Golden Age collectors out there that would really get mad at me, especially my good friend Jerry the Jitterbug <laughs> and a few others that I know that love this character. Uh, I think of Dragon Inc. Also loves this uh, this artist, I should say. Uh, this is C.C. Beck, and C.C. Beck is most well known for his Captain Marvel artwork. And this is just, you know, this is one of the more airbrush style covers, um, but just a really great classic cover. This is the first Mary Marvel. Uh, just a, you know, he was a really great artist. His his artwork has a lot of, uh, you know, that heroic element to it where you get to see Captain Marvel like fighting something or other or you know just really great covers and so C.C. Beck is just one of these great golden age artists that was important for Fawcett you know Fawcett was the big player at the time of during the golden age uh there was times when uh Fawcett and Captain Marvel would outsell Superman so he is a major artist uh and he did amazing work uh so this is uh C.C. Beck Okay, now I'm trying to show like artists that were major, not just for uh, their art style, but for their influence and um, what they meant for certain publications. So I showed some Fiction House ones, I showed some Disney ones, I showed some uh, Fawcett ones. Well, another big company is Archie. <laughs> and I want to show one of the, maybe one of the pinnacle covers from Archie but also from this particular artist. This is Bob Montana. And this is considered like the grail of the Archie collection uh, because it's, it's just this beautiful rendering of uh, Betty. It just, um, this is a really great cover. So, um, you know, Archie, <laughs> uh, but it's um, Bob Montana. And his, his artwork is highly sought after by Archie collectors because he just, he really captured that innocence and that, you know, what what good girl art collectors really like. And it's just a really great cover. So, um, uh, but he did, he did a bunch of stuff for Archie. So this is uh, Bob Montana, major artist for Archie. Now we're getting into the last few and I'm going to show you my, uh, I'm going to show a few before I show the big ones. One sec here. I'm going to think who would be my four. Okay, so I'm gonna, I gotta grab a few. <laughs> okay, so these ones I wanna show first. Um, first one is Wally Wood. So another artist, he was famous. He had actually fans writing into the publications who loved his artwork. And his star uh, style was just amazing. Um, he did a lot of uh, more sexy stuff later on in his career. And he died young. He actually committed suicide. So, um, but he's just a really brilliant artist, very driven man. Um, and he was well known for his stuff that he did for um, EC Comics. But he did things for DC and Marvel. So 
So just a really great artist from the golden age. Uh, and that actually worked right up until, um, he was kind of later golden age uh, artist, uh, but he worked right up until the early eighties. So Wally Wood, really great artist. And then um, another one, actually this artist is considered the greatest artist of all time. I'm not sure about that, but uh, he is definitely a, a major influence, major, <laughs> major, uh, there's actually two artists that are involved with this cover um, that are both major, and I kind of want to say both of them. Uh, so this is Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. So Joe Simon is well known for his involvement with the creation of Superman, and Jack Kirby, he's like another one of these major artists that got his start in the Golden Age. Uh, this is both of them did this cover um and jack kirby is well known for his work on fantastic four and a um, whole bunch of stuff like just he is like he's like a major 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 artist um and many people would say that he's considered the greatest artist of all time i enjoy his artwork but for me i have my four that i would put on mount rushmore and sorry, Jack Kirby, you probably should be there, but uh, I'm not putting you there. <laughs> so, Jack Kirby. Uh, the next one is Bob Kane. Uh, another artist that I I think he's got some really great stuff. Uh, again, he's not. He wouldn't be the four that I'd say are my favorite from the Golden Age. The ones I say are the pinnacle of, like the masters of the Golden Age, uh, but. Bob Kane is definitely, <laughs> definitely an artist that people should know from the Golden Age. Um, you know, he made Batman. He and Bob, uh, Bill Finger, you know, really created Batman and uh, made, you know, this character that we all love today. I mean, he's like the biggest character in my, my mind. Him and Superman, you know, the two biggest. Um, so Batman creation kind of makes him kind of a significant artist that you should know from the golden age and it's bob bob king okay so who are my four uh ones that i think should be on the mount rushmore comic book <laughs> mountain um and they would be matt baker uh he was an african-american or black artist um just really really great artist um Believe it or not, uh, he's most well known for his work on Phantom Lady, which is this book, uh, but not necessarily this issue. Number 17 is his kind of most famous uh, piece. Uh, other books that he was famous for were Seven Seas, but some of his romance books uh, are actually very impressive. Uh, some of the artwork, much more detailed than uh, the stuff that he did for Phantom Lady or for uh, Seven Seas. He, he just, he got more into like more detailed artwork. Um, but his stuff in, in Phantom Lady and Seven Seas are just brilliant, beautiful artwork. Uh, so he is one of the ones that I think should be on that mountain. <laughs> I think he's a great artist, Matt Baker. Uh, just a very important artist for the golden age, in my opinion. Okay, so that's number, that's the first one. Second one is L.B. Cole. Um, and the reason I, I, I pick L.B. Cole is uh, his artwork stands out. <laughs> it just stands out. Um, a lot of people consider him to be one of the greatest artists, or if not the greatest artist from the Golden Age. Uh, his artwork is, has these crazy uh, colors and just action and just details and just everything going on for it um and this is just a really good example of that just these kind of vibrant colors and um, like people say he he invented psychedelic before psychedelic <laughs> you know he, he was just really kind of these you know crazy covers so um that would be cool <laughs> a great artist okay um now Another group of people would get mad at me if I didn't mention this artist, and this is one of my favorite artists from the Golden Age, uh, Alex Schomburg. And this is my favorite Alex Schomburg. There's others people like uh, Startling, uh, you know, uh, number 
number 49 or uh you know his bender cover i should say um and there's comics that people really love from alex schomburg uh but this to me is my favorite <laughs> uh and it, it he was really well known for his airbrush style and but he also was well known for being the artist involved with the early captain america stuff um he did some pretty major pieces he would do all those ones with the crazy nazi stuff and just like just over the top action and the violence on the covers like spikes with spikes on top of the spikes and like um he'd always have it where the hero is like just out of range i don't know that was kind of a thing <laughs> that alex schomburg did but he just really great artist best known for doing these airbrush good girl covers um just one of the great artists from the golden age and alex schomburg so he would be on my mountain and the last one and he's considered like the fine artist of the golden age like a fine art uh would be frank fazetta so um this is Thunda number one uh and frank fazetta did everything in this book this is one of those few books where frank fazetta did the interior artwork um generally frank fazetta only did exterior artwork uh and this one was a bit of a passion project for him he is well known for his very uh, amazing technique. He was like a technical artist. Um, he's also the one that did the original cover for Vampirella. <laughs> so uh, just a really important artist. And his artworks, his uh, like paintings that he creates, sell for millions of dollars. So he's considered not only a comic book artist, but a fine artist. Like just truly a master of art um so um frank fazetta so those would be my the, the last four that i showed frank fazetta lb cole matt baker and alex schomburg would be the ones that i'd show on the mountain so i <laughs> that was a very long explanation and uh thing to get to that uh that final four uh but i kind of wanted to give you guys a really good sense of all the different artists from the from the golden age and i actually wrote down because there's so many that i didn't show that i could have shown but i didn't <laughs> like that i wanted to mention um bill ward uh joe joe simon i showed uh joe Doolin i showed jack kirby i showed um sid shores is another one actually right there um al williamson jack davis um and will eisner is a like one i should have shown he's a major major artist i didn't really i have lots of covers uh like magazines with will eisner but i didn't want to i wanted to show more comics um so and that's it those are some of the and like um gil fox would be another one that i could think of so um lots of really great and jack keeman would then another one that I could have shown. So uh, there's uh, so many great artists from the Golden Age <laughs> that that really should get mentioned. Um, so I just wanted to give you a, that taste of the Golden Age. Now to wrap up, I have one last question that I have to answer. I just gotta grab it. This is from Comic Book Ninja. What is your biggest comic book collecting regret? Ah, there's just so many. Um, there, I really regret not being a billionaire. <laughs> I can just buying everything, but um, but one of my biggest regrets was um, there was a like during the '90s and towards the end of the '90s, uh, what happened was there was so many shops that sprung up overnight. Like it was just like during the '90s, it like so many comic shops. Like my small town, like it was like, you know, Halifax, Nova Scotia, that I was living in at that time during the 90s, where I was going to university. Um, there was like about five shops, five, six shops. <laughs> it was like, and it's not like a big, big city. Um, but there was that many just in the core town. There was actually more shops outside of the town as well. Um, and what happened was all these shops sprung up and they kind of got 
hit by the comic downturn in the 90s and just they got decimated decimated and what happened was um they would have like these massive collections and so i went into this one shop and i brought in a guide with me because i knew what they were doing they were basically selling all their books uh 50 to 75 percent off guide doesn't matter what the book was you could if you saw x-men number one there 50 to 75 percent off guide and they actually i heard later i actually heard crazy story later but I'll tell you the first part. So they had all this stuff. So I brought in my guide and I was picking out things. Like I picked up the first black cat, for example, like from Spider-Man for like five, 10 bucks. <laughs> it was like, you know, and I just pick up all these keys. Like I'd try to pick, pick all the keys. I'd look at the guide and see which ones were keys. and I'd just pick out all the keys and they had no problem with that. They would go by guide and I'd pay like like 50 actually it was most of the time it was 75% off the guide price so just really cheap um however on the wall they had a book and I thought it looked kind of cool and I didn't recognize it at first I I, I I felt like such an idiot later um but it was Tales of Suspense uh 39 and it was you know with uh the first Iron Man and I'm like I, I probably could have picked it up for like 100 bucks it was a high grade. <laughs> it's a nice, nice book. Um, but I didn't. And I, 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 I always regret not knowing what it was at the time and not picking it up. See, my focus at that time was more the modern stuff. And I didn't really understand the Silver Age. So <laughs> I, I just was clueless. I just didn't know. It wasn't like nowadays where we have a lot more information. Uh, so I just didn't know. I, I knew it was Iron Man, but I didn't realize how cool of a book. And during that time, Iron Man wasn't as big of a character as, as he is now. Um, so I just regret not picking that up. Now, later, that same comic shop, they were having problems selling, even with those crazy prices. So they had a thing where you could buy those long boxes and they were just filled with keys. Like it was like a long box of keys and they would sell it for like, 50 bucks <laughs> you can buy like a few thousand dollars worth of comics for like 50 bucks it was it was insane and I, I i heard after that that's what people were doing they were just buying all these long boxes of just major books it was it was pretty sad so you know this was a pretty great shop and it just died and they they were just desperate for money so they were selling their comics like for pennies on the dollar very sad but um i regret not buying more from them but i just didn't have the money i was a poor student at the time okay so that was my missed opportunity on a book as well he asked that um what series on a series that you never got around to collecting or a book you paid too much for okay so um to a series that i wish i had gotten onto sooner and picked up the whole run was invincible i really i think it's a great series i I didn't know about it until I started watching Comic Tom. And um, it was a series that uh, I thought was really cool uh, because he always had it in his background. He had uh, Invincible number one in his background and he would talk about it being kind of a cool book. So I was like, oh, I'll check it out. And so I picked it up later than I should have. Like, I think it was already fairly far along in the run before I picked it up and then it got optioned so I picked up number one saying okay at least I have number one I'll get the others later <laughs> you know I just and um the, it, the, it got optioned and all of the books actually it's so funny because I actually did before it got optioned I had put um pretty much almost the like pretty much a fairly good run of all of invincible books in my shopping cart on my comic shop Okay, so I had them all in my shopping cart and I was sort of waiting uh, to check out. I, I kind of usually like to just check out like once a month. And just so I just put everything into my shopping cart and then at the end of the month, I'll buy them. And so what happened was um, I, I came back to my shopping cart like at when I was ready to buy and all of the <laughs> all of the Invincible books were removed because somebody had bought them. I, I just didn't. I didn't buy it soon enough 
and they were actually at really great prices like just like five ten bucks kind of level and the whole whole run disappeared i mean these are like all the big keys that were missing it was kind of sad so uh, <laughs> i was a little bit disappointed by that i did fill in a lot of the like run later uh but i was paying the more expensive prices uh, invincible is a great series i recommend if you haven't watched it definitely watch it it's probably one of the best uh animes out there uh just a really great series and a really great comic um definitely one that you should pick up and read uh it's so interesting <laughs> it's just a great series um so that would be that um but there's one comic did I, that i paid too much for so and this is one that i always kick myself about this is one that even today i paid too much for it so back in the 90s um you know we didn't have all the information that we have nowadays it was kind of hard to find out who where did somebody make their first appearance and i was a little naive back in the early 90s uh in terms of certain books um and i really wanted to get punisher's first appearance and first book and i didn't know that it was in asm 129 i i thought it would be in punisher number one so i i was asking people does anyone have a punisher number one because i wanted punisher number one as thinking that that would be his first appearance i was as i said i was naive i didn't know <laughs> i really didn't know so um what happened was uh somebody one of the comic shop guys he's like oh this guy's a bit of a sucker um <laughs> he thought he could he he basically wanted to take advantage of me um and he said oh i have you know a copy of punisher number one and you know probably at the time this is not the mini series this is the the first regular series punisher and you know it's a it was it was probably a vf maybe a near mint minus kind of level so it's not like a prestigious like like nine eight level book and he sold it to me for 20 bucks i think today you could still buy that same book for 20 bucks <laughs> it's just and that so this is like 40 uh 30 years ago i i bought it for like basically what you could buy it for now <sighs> i always kick myself about that i always feel like oh man i'm so dumb i, I should have like that was like a five dollar book i should have <laughs> paid five bucks for it that kind of level even though it's not it, it wasn't like a big loss or it wasn't like i paid way over but just that the fact that i felt so dumb not knowing um that first of all it wasn't the right book that it wasn't Punisher's first appearance. It wasn't a major key in any way because most people go after the mini series first, the the four uh, four or five for four or five part mini series first, and those books have some cool covers. Uh, it, it was one that's always considered that maybe third, uh, you know, third you know level book for Punisher. So it's just I feel I, I don't know. It's one of those things I always felt a little bit lame <laughs> having bought that. So um, I I don't know. That's my biggest re biggest overpay regret kind of comic. Um, four times over the value probably. So um, yeah, that is my story. Um, I hope you enjoyed these Q and A questions that I did, and I hope you enjoyed my look at Golden Age artists. And um, if you have a question that you want answered below, please put it in the comments below. And if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to the channel and uh, like and all that kind of stuff. And check out my other stuff. There's so many videos that I've created that I worked hard on and hopefully you enjoy. Um, and I recommend you check them out. Thanks.